Okay, seventh grade math students. Um, today we are going to look at lesson 9.3, which is all about finding the area of circles. Okay, so in your notes, if you would please copy down this heading right here, area of circles. Copy down the lesson number, lesson 9.3, and be sure and include today's date. Okay, now I can always tell you guys if I go too fast, just pause the video and get caught up and then restart the video. Okay. And here we go. Now, guys, today's material is pretty simple. I'm not going to deny that, but do understand the problems in the homework assignment from 9.3 that we're going to be doing later will be challenging, okay? So take great notes, pay attention, and understand you will be challenged in this lesson, okay? So please make sure that you're ready. Now, let's pause quickly. Um, Let's pause and quickly discuss the difference between the area and the perimeter of a circle. Okay, A, so oh, here we go. You can take some notes or just listen if you want to. Um, I'm going to go back to my old swimming pool illustration. If someone had a circular swimming pool like this, and they wanted to buy a pool cover, a cover that goes over the pool like this, to keep leaves out of it and to keep the water warm. Some of the pool covers that you can purchase are solar pool covers and they attract the sun's heat and it absorbs the heat and keeps the water warm. So if you want to buy a pool cover um, you would find the area of the circular pool because area is the amount of space here that's inside of the circle. Okay. Now, if you want to purchase a fence to go around your pool, then you would find the perimeter of the pool. Okay, now I do want to say this, guys, and I'm going to mention this later in the video again, okay, but hardly never, hardly never do you say the perimeter of a circle. Okay, you all know what we call it, don't you? Sure you do. Finding the perimeter of a circle is the same thing as finding the circumference. Okay? So, I mean, you could say there's nothing wrong technically with saying the find the perimeter of a circle or what is the perimeter of a circle. But we usually, we usually don't say perimeter of a circle. We usually say circumference of a circle. So circumference is the exact same thing as perimeter, only it's dealing with a circle. So if you want to see how much fencing you need to buy for your pole, you would find the perimeter, or you would find the circumference of the circle. Okay. Now moving on, when dealing with circles, like I told you, we mentioned this later. When dealing with circles, we almost always use the word circumference instead of the word. So understand, when dealing with circles, these two words here are the exact same thing. Okay? All right, moving on. Uh, now, here's the formula for the area of a circle. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, already know it. But here's the formula. All right? A equals pi r squared. Now, guys, I'm sure you know this, but pi, of course, is just a number. Okay? It's just a number. Now, sometimes we use 3.14 for pi. Okay? Sometimes we use 22 over 7, which is the exact same thing as 3 and 1 seventh. And then sometimes, to be honest with you, this is going to be kind of, this will probably be kind of new to you guys, but we do this a lot in pre-calculus class. Pi just is left pi, okay? We don't put anything for it. We just leave pi pi, okay? Now, in the book, in the problems that you're going to do, they will tell you most of the time, if not all of the time, they will tell, sorry for yawning, they will tell you whether or not they want you to use 3.14 for pi, or if they want you to use 22 over 7 for pi, or if they want you to pi for pi. Okay, so they will let you know, all right? But any of these can 
be used for pi, okay? Now, let's take a look at example number one. To save you having to draw this drawing in your notes, you can just put in your notes base 317, example number one, okay? And here's what they want us to do. Listen carefully, please, students. They want us to find the area of the shaded region. Now, in your book, I, I don't have my book open, but I think it's uh, the shaded area right here. I think it's maybe a yellow or an orange shaded area, I believe. But in my notes here, I'm just using blue. But it doesn't change the problem, guys. We're still trying to find the area of this shaded region right here. Got it? Okay. Now, some things you need to know. See this inner circle right here? We know the radius. The radius from here to here is 3. Okay? And this 5, it was kind of hard. I tried to draw this 5 inside like that. As you can tell, it really didn't show up very well. So, this 5 is referring to this whole radius here from here all the way out. So that 5 is the radius for this entire circle. Okay, now I just thought of something. I don't think I need to go over this, but I'm not going to take a chance. Okay, you guys do know the radius is the length from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. And you guys do know the diameter is a segment that starts on one end of the circle, goes to the other side of the circle, and it has to pass through the center. So, in this example here, if my radius was 4, then my diameter would be, my diameter would be what? It would be 8. So your diameter is always twice, two times the radius, always. Or you could say the radius is always what? Half of the what? Diameter. Now, I'm sure you guys knew that already, but I just want to make sure, okay? All right, so moving on. So here's what we're going to do. We want to find the area of this region. Now, some of you might know what to do. Some of you might not, but just take some notes. Follow my reasoning and see if this doesn't make sense, okay? Let's do this first. Let's find the area of the entire circle. This whole huge circle right here. Let's let's forget the problem that we just had right here with all of the stuff here. Let's just pretend we have one big circle like this, okay? And that big circle has a radius of what? Five, right? So let's find the area of this big circle right here. Got it? So if I asked you to find the area of this circle here, forget the problem back here. Just forget about that. If I asked you to find the area of that circle, you would write down your formula, right? And then for pi, I'm going to tell you what to use. In this problem here, we're going to use 3.14, okay? So for pi, you would substitute 3.14. Radius, you would substitute 5, okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Hopefully you guys know that you do not multiply these two numbers together first. You always do your powers slash exponents first. Always. Okay? So, the first thing you have to do is you have to take 5 times 5, which of course if you 25. Okay? So, I bring down my... Now notice the two parentheses are what these two parentheses here are side by side, so they were multiplying. So when you bring down your 3.14, and when you square the 5 and put 25 here, then of course you are multiplying. Okay, so if we multiply these two numbers together right here, you will get this right here. Okay, there's the work right here for you, and so there we go. The area of the big circle is 78.5 which is the exact same thing 
as 78.5 okay now moving on um, let's do this now see if this makes sense here guys okay now let's find the area of this little circle right here just again just follow along and see if you can understand my reasoning here at the end okay so now let's forget we have this big problem here let's just find the area of this little circle here that has a radius of three okay so let's do that next and so here we go I'm gonna use my formula right here and so next I'm gonna put for pi 4, of course, and if my radius, I'm going to put 3, because the radius of my little circle here is 3, okay? So I'm going to put 3, and remember, next we square the 3 first, we do not multiply these numbers here, okay? So 3 times 3 is 9, and then multiply these two numbers together, and if you do that correctly, you will get 28.26. Okay, so now I know the area of my small circle is 28.26. Okay, now, Mr. Earhart, now some of you watching this video, you probably understand why we did this, and some of you might not. So let's just take a look at this together. Okay, now look, area of the entire big circle right here, the whole big circle, is this right here. Okay. And the area of this little circle is this right, this right here, okay? So, there's my big circle. Now, I have a question for you, okay? What's the area of this whole big circle? This, right? So, if I have 78.5 is the area of my entire circle. If I cut part of it away like this, if I cut part of it away, then I would have to do what? I would have to subtract that from my overall area. Well, if you'll notice, guys, look what I just cut away. I cut away this circle right here. Well, didn't we find the area of that circle right here? Sure I did. So if I take the entire area of this whole big circle, which is this right here, and I subtract out I take this out and subtract it, and of course, the area of this right here is 28.26. If I do that, think about it, guys. Take this whole area right here and subtract out this right here. Look what you're left with, the blue area here, the, the blue region. So students, the way to find the area of this blue region right here is to simply take the entire area of this whole huge circle and subtract out this area here and what you're left over with is the blue shaded region. So that's what I did. I took my area of the big circle minus the area of my small circle. Now guys, remember, when you multiply two numbers, you do not have to line up your decimal. Oh, in fact, you're not supposed to. Look, here's one decimal here, and the decimal for the 9, even though you can't see it, is right here. And they're not lined up at all. When we multiplied these two numbers, we did not slide the 9 over and put it here so that the decimals were lined up. We didn't do that, okay? When you multiply, you don't have to do that. But when you add or subtract, remember, you've got to line up your decimal. Okay, so decimal here, decimal here. So it's better, probably easier, if I just put a zero right there like that. And now let's subtract. If you do that correctly, you will get 50.24. Now remember, students, we are looking for area. So since we do not know if these numbers here are inches, feet, centimeters, yards, whatever, since we don't know that we have to label our answer units squared. Okay? Now, moving on, let's try another problem. Okay, copy this. 
your nose can ice if you would please. I'm telling you right now, the area of a circle is 201 and one seventh. Okay, and I want you to find the radius. And I tell you right here, I want you to use three and one seventh for pi. Now remember, I mentioned to you earlier that for pi, sometimes we're going to use this, sometimes this, and then sometimes just the pi. So in this problem here, I am telling you that I want you to use three and one seventh. Okay, so. I've told you what to use, and so here we go. All right, so guys, how can I find the radius when given the area? Well, it's really not that hard. Think about it. If I have a rectangle, and I told you the area was 200, and I told you this length there was 20, and I asked you to find this measurement here, you know what you would do. The area of a rectangle is what? Base times height area is 20, so you'd be saying to yourself, oh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, base times height, or length times width, I guess we've said. Anyways, the length would be 20, um, this would be 200, the length would be 20, and you can see right away, W has to be 10, because W times 10 is 200. So, you would use the area formula, even though you're not trying to find the area, and it's the same thing like that with the circle. We are not trying to find the area. We know the area right here. But since we do since we do know the area, then we are going to use the area formula. Okay? Now, I already told you what we're going to use for I and what we're going to use for area. So for your area right here, we're going to put 201 and 1 seventh. Okay? Now for pi right here, we're going to put 3 and 1 seventh. Okay, and of course for your R, we don't put anything because that is what we're looking for. What is the radius? Okay, now, I hope you understand what to do next. We've done a lot of problems, guys, this year, and to me, I hope you're seeing this, to me it really is common sense. I mean, you have 3 and 1 seventh right here times R, so if I want to get rid of that 3 and 1 Seventh, then I have to divide both sides by what? Three and one seventh. But guys, stop and think. Stop and think. You have to use common sense here. You know that you never want to multiply or divide fractions when you have what? Mixed numbers. So let's just stop right now and let's turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions because you know you do not want to divide fractions when they are mixed numbers. <clears throat> so let's convert this mixed number here into an improper fraction and we're going to take 201 times 7, multiply these two numbers together and then whatever you get you add 1. If you do that but you'll get this right here. Now, let's change this fraction here into an improper fraction. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22, so that's going to be 22 over 7. And of course, bring down your r squared. Now we're all set, guys. Now we're ready to do what? Divide both sides by what? 22 over 7. Okay, so here we go. Let's do that. There we go. Now, when I divide both sides by 22 over 7, when I do that, these here cancel, leaving you with r squared. Now this here, guys, we have no idea what that answer is, so we're going to have to work it out. We have this right here, divided by this here. So students, this is not hard. You're just dividing to what? Two fractions. Okay, so there we go. This fraction right here divided by this fraction here. And you guys know how to divide fractions. Remember, make this multiplication and you flip this fraction here so it looks like that. Now look at your 7 here. 7 obviously goes into both of these numbers. So this 7 
here becomes a 1, and this up here becomes a 1. And then you might not have known this, but guess what? 22 does go into both of these numbers. So 22 goes into 22 once, and 22 goes into 1408, 1408, 64 times. And now here we go. 64 times 1 is 64. One, 1 times 1 is 1. And 64 over 1 is 64. Oh, guys, a lot of students stop here and they think they're finished. But hold on a second. We didn't find the radius. I mean, yes, we found the radius if that 2 wasn't there. But the 2 is there. So we got to think this through. In other words, what number could I put in for R? That when I square it, I get 64. Would it be 1? Is 1 times 1 64? No. Would it be 4? No. 4 times 4 is 16. Would it be 7? No. 7 times 7 is 49. Would it be 8? Yes, it would be 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. So the number I would put in for R is 8. So R equals 8. There we go. So you found the radius. Okay? Not too bad, guys. Not too bad. Now, I would warned you at the very start of this video that the overall gist of finding the area of circles is easy. But the problems I'm going to give you in your homework and on upcoming tests and quizzes will be challenging. Okay? All right. Please copy this notes. I know that I go fast, but all you have to do is pause the video, back it up, and you'll be fine, okay? Now, I want you to do two things. I want you to find the radius and the circumference, okay? And all that I'm going to tell you is this. I'm going to tell you the area is 49 pi. Now, did you notice, guys, let's go back. Did you notice the first problem I had you do right here? we used 3.14 for pi. And the second problem we did, that we did, we used 3 and 1 seventh for pi. Okay, and now for this problem here, we're going to use pi for pi. How do, I, how do I know that? Because it says right here, leave your answer in terms of pi. In other words, leave pi pi. So, listen to me carefully. When it says the area of the circle is 49 pi, does that mean 49 times pi? Yes, it does. Does that mean 49 times 3.14? Yes, it does. And if you were to take 49 times 3.14, you would get 153.86. And yes, that would be the same thing as this. And this is, so this is the area, and so is this. But the difference is, is they're telling you to leave everything in terms of pi. In other words, do not substitute anything in for pi. Leave pi pi. Okay? So, with that in mind, here we go. Let's first find the radius of the circle. All that we know is what? We know the area, that's all we know. Okay, so we know we're going to use the area formula. Okay, now, what is the area of the circle? 49 pi. So I'm going to put that right there for area. Okay, now, we already know that we're going to leave pi pi. So for this pi right here, I'm just going to leave it pi. Okay, and then bring down my r squared. Now, guys, students, ladies, men, I'm trying to find what? The radius. So what is the pi doing to the radius? It's multiplying, correct? So you know what to do. Let's divide both sides by pi. I mean, we can do that, guys. Pi is a number, right? And if you had 49 equals 7 x, you would divide both sides by 7 to get rid of your 7, right? So let's divide, let's divide both sides by pi. Now when you do that, guys, over here, the pi's are going to cancel. So you'll be left with 
r squared. Now over here, the pi's will cancel also, oh, so you'll be left with 49. Okay, so again, we have not found the radius yet. If this r was all by itself, then yes, we would be done. The radius would be 49, we'd be finished. Okay, but that's not the case. The r still has a squared with it. So, here we go. We have to say to ourself, self, what number would I put in for r that when I square it, I get 49? Well, guys, I hope you know what that would be. It would be 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. So, the number that you have to put in for r right here. Oven, okay, so r equals 7. So you did it, you found the radius, okay? So the radius of this circle equals what? 7. So we're halfway done. Find radius, check, and now we have to find the circumference, okay? Now, this should be old news to you guys. You should know how to find the circumference of a circle, but just in case you don't, Let's take a look at this real quick, okay? There are two formulas that you can use when finding the circumference of a circle, okay? There's one pi times d, and here's the other one pi times, or two times pi r. Now, we're going to use both of them, and I'm going to show you both of them work, okay? For example, we already talked about how the di if we already found the radius, right? Right here, we found radius. And we talked way, way back earlier in the video, how the diameter is always twice as big as the radius, right? So, if the radius is 7, then the diameter has to be 14. So, for, for t right here, for t, I'm going to put 14. Now, remember, we would like, normally, we want to put what in for pi? We want to put 3.1 or 22 over 7, but the directions say to leave pi pi. So, we're not going to put anything in for pi. We just simply say that pi times 14 is the same thing as 14 pi. And yes, it would be pretty weird if you wrote your answer by 14. That's just not how we do it. The number does go first. Okay? So, the circumference of the circle equals 14 pi. Now, let's use this formula, and you'll see you'll get the exact same answer, okay? All right, here we go. So, um, for, my, for my radius here, I put 7, okay? Now, remember, when you have three numbers being multiplied together, like 2 times pi times 7, it does not matter which order you put these numbers, okay? You could put 2 times 7 times pi. Okay, you could do that, and that's what I did. Now, why would I do that? So I could then multiply these two numbers together, and I would get 14, and of course, 14 pi. Okay, so students, that's it for today. It's not a diff super difficult long video, but it's really opening your mind up to some new stuff. For example, leaving area or circumference in terms of pi, or um, how to um, be given and then be able to find the radius or the diameter, okay? Guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact